All right, let's get started. Hi, my name is Tara. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> so I'm a celebrity makeup artist, and today I want to do something a little different. I wanted to kind of delve into someone, another celebrity makeup artist, who inspired me to become a makeup artist, and that is Kevin Aquan. So there are a lot of magazine tearouts that I had on my walls when I was just a little one <laughs> and I wanted to recreate one of those because that's where I pull a lot of my references from where I always have and kind of what inspired me to get into makeup in the first place so that being said Versace in the 90s that beauty really inspired me to get into beauty so that's the look I'm going to recreate for you today I have a particular look in mind that I'm going to recreate Kevin was perfect so I'm not going to reinvent it much I'm just going to kind of put my own spin on it so that I'm not just totally copying his work I also have Kevin's books and I studied them before I even started studying makeup so his techniques have really informed who I am as a makeup artist so let's get started I've already prepped my skin with a Shiseido serum and a Jan Marini vitamin C serum and a glycolic serum. I'm going to use some face tapes. So I'm gonna use my alcohol and my little cotton wipes where the tapes will go on to be free from any um, skincare products so that they will adhere properly. That ought to be good. And these are the Mark Trainer facelift tapes in brown. So I'm going to place these. I'm going to lift the skin a little first to see what kind of lift I'm going for. I'm going to go for it like this. So I want the tape to be about right there. And these also help to give me a bit more play when it comes to doing certain looks on my eyes because as you see I have a little some creasing in my lid so if I do some really graphic liners um, my lids can get in the way a bit as well as lifting the face and the brow so I'm gonna hold these down for a moment get them nice and stuck on there and then just pull these tapes back you see there's these notches here and this bit will go into one of those notches. I like to put it on the tightest one so that my face is snatched. I'm just gonna go ahead and like tuck it underneath my curls to hide the strings. And you get good at doing this so that you can do it without looking. Like so. Snatch city. I think I'll take this brush. This is a BoxyCharm brush. The bristles are nice and thick. I'm going to use my Embryolisse. I love this as a primer. And I'm just going to be pretty generous with it. Good prep skin gives you beautiful makeup. So I exfoliated beforehand, did a little mask, and properly moisturized. The more that you can prep the skin, the better your makeup will turn out. Bring that down the neck. Boop. For the look that I'm recreating today, it was on Christy Turlington, and it was in the 1992 Versace winter show, I believe. It photographed paler, like more fair, but in some of the photos it does look a bit more bronzy, and in the adverts it was bronzier. So. I'm gonna kind of go somewhere in between. I'm pretty fair, so I'm gonna kind of play with it, okay? <laughs> this is a very exciting moment for me. This is like one of my favorite looks of all time, so I'm feeling excited and nervous at the same time. So I don't have a ton of Kevin Aquan products, but I do have some. So I'm going to try to use um, as many of his products as I can. All right, I'm gonna take this Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer and I'm literally going to prime my under eyes. Surprise, surprise. And I'm doing this because 
I'm going to be contouring and highlighting a lot. And I'm going to be using eye colors and eyeshadows and I'm going to be bringing them under the eye. So on under eyes of my texture, meaning, you know, they get a little crepey. Um, it's good to prime. Use as much primer as you would on the lid as you would under the eye so that it doesn't like crease and get weird. Depending on who the model was in the show, he did a different brow color. But since my hair is dark and Christie's was blonde, I'm actually going to now draw on, not draw on, but like set my brows with this MAC Pro Long Waterproof Brow Set in Bold Brunette, just to kind of like get the shape going. So as I start to contour my face, I kind of know where the brows are. They don't get lost. So I kind of like color the hairs upwards, downwards to get them really coated. And I'll clean up the excess with a Q-tip. Because my brows are microbladed, they can get a bit lost once I start putting my base on. So sometimes I like to pop them out a little first because the brows are like the anchor of the face. So I'm just brushing this out so it's not like clumpy, it looks more natural. Now I'm gonna take my trusty little cotton swabs and clean up the area around just with nothing on it. I could dip it in a little moisturizer, but I don't really need to right now. It just comes right off. And we're going to carve these out better later, so don't worry too much. Kevin's work was always so precise, and in all of his books, he taught you that, you know, makeup is a way to really change the face when you want to, and I always loved that. So that was one of the things I wanted to do today, is like, kind of, alter my features using makeup on the base right now and what I'm gonna do is spray with a little bit of this eminent stone crop hydrating mist because I will be packing the makeup on today so I just want to like give the skin extra love just like tapping it in with the beauty blender. All right, so I haven't really used this Sensual Skin Enhancer product by Kevin Kwan very often. I have it, it's like this, and I have it in a few different colors. But since this is the Kevin Kwan inspired video, um, I'm going to get into it a bit. So I don't have a ton of familiarity with the product but there's only one way to learn and that's to use it. <laughs> so let's get down and dirty, shall we? So I know that you can use this as a concealer and a foundation. So I wanna use this right now as more of like a base, a foundation. I know that you can thin it out and that's what I wanna do right now. So let's see, let's try. I have this face oil and I wanna see what happens when I like mix a little in to make it a little less intense. I'm gonna use this Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush by Sephora VIP Rouge. It's like, looks like that. And I'll probably also um, buff it in more with my favorite MAC brushes. This one is a Looks like 137. I really like the stipple brushes for foundation, for bases, but I like, stip I like stipple brushes. So we're gonna play around with those and these Artiste brushes. His looks were very uh, matte, like powdered and gorgeous, which is something that people don't really do so much anymore. And that's also why I thought this would be fun to do. You know, everything's about like glow, glow, glow now, which is also gorgeous, but you know, nothing wrong with taking it back OG every once in a while. I'm gonna also try some of this uh, Glow Ahead Illuminating Face Oil by Wander. And honestly, 
some of my favorite things to do is just like trial and error. A great thing about makeup is like, if you mess up, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can just wipe it off. All right, so we have two, five, and six here. This little made palette. So I'm looking at these colors and it looks like two and five will be nice for me. And six might be like a nice little contoury color. So, you know, I like to mix things together. I'm just gonna like stipple into the two and the five and then see what happens when I kind of stipple it into this oil. Cause it is a very thick pigmented concealery foundation, but it is supposed to be stunning. It's the word on the street when you can use it properly. All right, so let's just start doing it, yeah? All right, so this is the two and the five of the Kevin Aquan Central Skin. And I'm gonna put it like in the places I would want some illumination, you know, like the higher points. Now, since I do have the tapes there, and I did bring them in a little closer than I would have liked, I'm gonna have to work around that, but you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start by just like stippling it on. So yeah, it is very thick, and I just tapped it in and then tapped it in the oil. I'm gonna switch to a different brush since this one has so much product on it. Another brush that I can get buffing with. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna switch brushes. That one's giving me a little too much of a dry effect. So let's go Let's go to him. All right, it's looking a little dry on me. So I'm thinking I'm gonna spray a little of this Ready Set Radiant Skin Mist by Tarte over it and then use my Beauty Blender. Yeah, all right, I'm not mad at that. I think the way to use this is to keep it kind of moist. I know a lot of you hate that word. <laughs> That's the Eminent Stone Crop Hydrating Mist. I'm just gonna keep dampening it a bit to work it into the skin to get it to kind of like join, join forces with the skin. So I'd say the best way to work with this is to use something that rolls it into the skin more, like a beauty blender. Otherwise, it does kind of like sit on the skin, kind of like a more chalky theatrical makeup sort of deal. That's my two cents for whatever it's worth. <laughs> Not too shabby. Not my absolute favorite, to be honest, but it's also not too bad. I'm gonna wipe the rest of this off my hand because I will be using something else for the rest of the base to be honest. But I'll play with that product more and find better ways to use it because I do know makeup artists who use it and really love it. So, you know, I think I'm just not doing it properly. This is difficult for me because this is like my favorite look that has inspired me for so long. So it makes me like extra nervous. So yeah, it's taken me um, this long to like sit down and recreate it. So, yeah, when you watch video that Kevin took of the models and the looks, it was a lot of makeup, which is how he like transformed their faces. And um, it was very powdery. So I want to really go for that and like use his technique. My point being this thin layer that I applied isn't going to be enough. <laughs> I'm going to really use his contouring techniques, contouring with different um, shades of concealer and foundation and just like go to town so yeah here we go i'm using this little blister pack sample of urban decay in eden which says it's a nude matte so i want to really prime the lids really well because i want everything to be perfect 
So I'm going to apply this with this Makeup Forever Professional brush. I love these brushes. This one's 244 straight. And I have a whole set of these and they're all so good. So I'm just going to like really go to town with this primer. Bring it all the way up to the brow, all the way into the nose. Because as I said, I do want to really like carve out my features and even like change some of it. And I'm gonna prime the under eye again. I used that Smashbox under eye primer, but I'm going extra for everything. And I'm of course not going to leave it on this thick. I'm just patting it in and then I'm gonna blend it out, especially under the eyes. Because I want them to be primed, but I also don't want them to be like um, cakey and make me look a million years old. So I've never used this product before. It's drying quickly and it is getting a bit tacky. As you can see, my hair is actually sticking to it. So I'm noticing in places I put it on a little thicker. I'm just going to like roll, on, roll it in with my fingers so that it doesn't start to like flake or pill like it is right here because it's not really blending out how I had hoped. So perhaps a different brush will be better for that, like this concealer brush, Laura Mercier. It's a camouflage powder concealer. And I'm just gonna like roll it in with this because it does seem to be setting quite rapidly, which is probably a good thing. Cause maybe it'll grip that shadow really well. So I'm gonna comb the brows again. And this is Chella Eyebrow Defining Gel in Clear. I'm going to prep the lip using Balm de la Mer, the lip balm. And I just, it's clear. Take a Q-tip. So when we start doing the lips, they will be nice and moisturized. I also did a lip scrub earlier, which when you have the time, and yourself an, or a client, I would recommend prepping as much as you can the skin because you'll get a better outcome. There's nothing worse than trying to do makeup on very, very dry, peeling skin. It's much easier to try to conceal blemishes and work with oily skin than it is very dry and peeling skin. Trust me on that one. So I have the clear gel in my brows. I'm going to get my trusty brow brushes. The amazing Chanel brush, brow number 12, these stiff bristles, and the NARS brush in number five, also very stiff bristles, incredible brushes. I have these brow mascaras in every color, literally. Um, I only brought out the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel in Espresso and the MAC Pro Longwear in Bold Brunette today. So that's what we're working with. And I usually don't use these on my own brows because they are very thin, but we're doing different things today. So we're doing things how I think Kevin would do them. So I'm gonna brush them up with this Anastasia brush. I think it came with a brow kit. Just get them nice and groomed upwards. At this point, you could take a little um, brow scissor if you want them to be perfect. And once you brush them upwards, like so, you could trim the excess hairs if you wanted like a really even brow. But I kind of like them a little mangy, so. It's just your preference. So I'm gonna open up this Anastasia one first before I go into my powders. And see how that's like a mascara wand? So since my brows are very thin and sparse and these looks I'm doing, you know, in the 90s, it was a very thin brow anyhow. I'm gonna just take this brush and kind of like paint into the color like so. And then I'm gonna go in and do like this. So kind of like how you would use a shadow 
to draw into your brows. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if I do it with the mascara wand, I'll get two more product than I than I want right now. And so doing it this way, I can really control the amount of product that I'm going to get and apply. And a really nice way to make your brow look real natural is to just mix a bunch of different colors since that's um, you get more dimension that way. And it looks more like a natural brow, if that's what you're going for. Sometimes it's nice to just be dramatic and not care so much about it looking natural. Today we're not looking, we're not going so much for a natural look. We're going for super snatched. And as you can see so far, it's not having a super dramatic effect. And that's what I was going for. I just want to like paint the hairs because I am going to fill in with powder, but I don't want to paint the skin. Now I'm going to go back in with the MAC Pro Longwear in Bold Brunette. So I'm really just trying to get the hairs because I will use the powder to fill in the spots that I want to fill in on the skin. This is more for the hair and the grooming of the hairs, which is why I'm not really bringing it out to the tail because in the tail, I don't really have any hairs. <laughs> All right, those hairs look pretty well encoded. Now I'm gonna take my Chanel brush and my little mystery brow palette. This is what the colors look like. And I'm gonna dip into the darkest and the middle. And I'm gonna start just filling these in. Now, the shape that is in this look is a bit more like the brow does come down here, whereas mine just kind of like ends off into oblivion. So I am gonna reshape my brows so that I match the look. So it's a bit more like that. It arches here, and then it does come down. So for that, I'm gonna use my little NARS brush. Okay. Dip into the middle and the light, and just get that shape right. So, the arch is kind of right here. It doesn't come down far, but it does, it does come back down. All right, so to really like get these in there, <laughs> if that made any sense, I'm gonna use the Kevin Aquan brow pencils, which are my favorite brow pencils, always. So I personally use Warm Blonde, Brunette, and Dark Brunette. I'm gonna start with the Warm Blonde. Look how precise that is. And the other end has a little brush. They're perfect, perfect. And they're really pigmented. So I'm gonna go and just start drawing little hairs in. I'm gonna look up like this so I can see the bottom line to make sure it's real precise under there. The precision that you can get with these is just out of this world. I've tried a million brow pencils and for somebody who does not really have brow hairs like myself, these are the only ones that I can get down with for use on myself. And they don't wear off, which is great if your skin gets oily and you're literally drawing your brows on. <laughs> the last thing you want is in the middle of the day to only have one eyebrow. It's happened to me, guys. It's not cute. 
you like lean on your hand for a little bit and then all of a sudden you're like oh nobody told me i'm missing a brow cool 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 so these little babies are super pigmented super precise you can literally draw hairs and they won't just wipe off i want to just like amp up the concealer a little bit so that when i start the eye makeup i have some powder etc under the eyes to catch any fallout this is dose of colors in light let me see what so that's a nice color i have a tart shape tape in fair neutral a Kat Von D Locket Concealer Cream in Light Neutral. A NARS in Affogato. Affogato call you. And a MAC Select Moisture Cover in NW25. This is a NARS brush. So I'm going to dip into this, see if it's too light. I'm just going to like dot it on some high points. And some low points, aka help me I need coverage. Now I'm afraid this one might be a bit drying, like what's underneath it. So in order to help with that, we have this shape tape. It may also be a little drying, but and we're gonna go here. Oh good, that's not quite as fair. I'm just gonna start like carving the features out a little bit. I need something a little warmer, so I really like these Tom Ford illuminating pens, and this one seems to be out. And I have this number eight in Sable Intense. So let's check her out. It might be what the doctor ordered. It's like a little orange, but you know, let's see how it works out. Now I know you might already be thinking, wow, got a lot of makeup going on. And I don't disagree with you. <laughs> I'm doing all of these different colors in order to kind of get the right color. NW25 by MAC. We're gonna put this yeah, in some places where we want a little warmth as well. Because what we're going for is that when they all blend together into perfect harmony, that the color turns out beautiful. And then we have this Locket Concealer KVD in Light Neutral L11. And let's see how she looks. Okay. So you see what we have so far. We have something that looks terrifying. <laughs> but I think we'll actually turn out quite lovely, knock on wood. Now I could have used some concealers that I just know match right off the bat. If you do have a bunch of different concealers that don't match your skin tone, like what do you do? How do you try to make a match? Observe. <laughs> so these are the, from the Artiste brush collection. There's some really interesting ones I haven't used before, but they're shaped like this, and I think they'll be really good to like get up in there, like so. It's like a nice little size for that. And they're very soft. So yeah, that is quite nice for that. So that's that like orangier concealer. You want to blend that down. That is a nice little nose one. All right, I'm gonna switch to the bigger ones. It's a little too tiny. So there's this little guy. I think he's nice for under eyes. And like around these little tight, tight spaces. So I'm going to start with, I'm starting with the lighter places and then I'll start blending the darker. I 
otherwise if you start with the darker then you'll have um, everything will just be darker <laughs> It's a cute little brush. Sometimes fingers are just <laughs> the best. The best tool. And you got a bunch of them right there. I would say 10, but you know. Some people don't have ten. You have as many as you have and that's all that matters. Alright, to blend out the the darker color, I'm gonna switch brushes so that I don't mucky up the works. I don't dirty this one up. So I'm gonna use this one. Not bad though. It actually gave me more um, contour than I expected. Any Kevin Aquan products I do have, I'm gonna use them. This is called the Creamy Glow Dual Duo Number no. Three, Tan Soleil and Bettina. This one's called Duo Number no. Four, Sculpting Medium Candlelight. And so, let go. <laughs> Let's do this. And this is one of my favorite cream blushes called Prevella. And I think it, these will all go nicely with this look. And then I have the sensual skin powder foundation in pf1 and two we're gonna go in get the skin beautiful and set so that we can move on to the eyes i'm going to use this makeup forever professional in 150 and i'm going to first start with this lovely little contour which i actually think i take it back i'm going to use this artiste brush and i'm just going to go See that like nice, neutral, cool? And I like to tap it on my hand first to make sure I don't have too much product on there. And that glow highlighter bit, we might use some of that at the end, but not right now. So I'm gonna go in and in all of his, in these photos, um, the face is very sculpted like this. I mean, part of it is that Christy Turlington has like incredible cheekbones. <laughs> so, you know, there is that. But he was also very into sculpting the face. I'm going to use a darker, I mean, a smaller brush for the nose and try, try my darndest to make my nose look a bit more, as much like hers as I possibly can. And this brush is pretty good to like buff color in. And I am kind of, I'm going where my cheekbones are. I am also kind of cheating it a little bit because I want to look like Chrissy Turlington. <laughs> and mean, her forehead is very carved out like that. I also don't want it to look at all um, like my face is contoured. So I'm also gonna dip into this one because I think adding those together will kind of like liven it up a little bit. And just deepen my cheek hollows a little more. <laughs> There's like a straight line on her face like here. But I do think that's natural. She's just perfect in every way. But I'm gonna try to fake it a little more. Fake it till you make it, guys. All right, I'm done with that. I need to like highlight, go back and highlight my forehead. But so far, so good. All right, um, I'm gonna use this little nosy nose guy, these two brushes by Artiste. And I'm gonna use the same little contour. And I'm gonna try to fake it to make my nose look like hers. So I'm gonna dip into there. And so her nose is like really perfect, obviously. But mine's very round here and hers is like super snapped. So make it look skinnier. And then there's like a little button here. Boop, and contour here that I will blend in and you know, 
fix and it looks like I have a mustache. <laughs> like this does feel very Kevin. He liked to like transform people's faces into other people's faces. <laughs> so I obviously want to blend that <laughs> so it's not like, hi, I got brown on my nose, but you know. All right, I'm going to use this. This is a CND, I think it's a nail brush, but I like it. So whatever. I still can't get my nose skinny enough. Christy, your nose is so skinny. I love it. I look like Shrek in comparison. All right, you want to make sure your nose doesn't look dirty. <laughs> right now, mine's looking like borderline dirty, but we got more makeup to go, so it's okay. I'm going to take a little bit of this and just start like, you know, carving out the contour a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of this blush, this little blushy blush of Kevin's. It's not like a very blushy look, so I'm just going to like barely get in there. I think I'm almost already too blushy. So. Just really blend it out. <laughs> I need to just like brighten up a little more under the eyes so that so that it's like more highlighted. So I'm gonna use this NARS in Affogato, just like a little bit here, because I brought the contour in a little much. On the nose, like there, a little bit there, a little more here, because these were the, these triangles of the face and these looks were like super, super bright. And I'm gonna powder it. Just like keeping these quarters of the face like really cut. Since we just packed on a lot of makeup, I'm actually going to spray it with the Eminent Stone Crop Hydrating Mist. All right, so right now I'm just gonna do like a clean basic powders um, just so I can start on the eyes and it won't, when it falls, it will have something to catch on to. I've actually never really used these Central Skin Powder Foundations. I think we might do like a little layer of that on first since we're really like going to town. It's just like a little fluffy rounded. And so I'm gonna use number one, PF01, for like the higher points for loose powder. Just like a light buff. and on the eyelids so that they're really primed. And then I'll take the P2, which is not really that different, but I'll do that. I did it really lightly. And in addition to that, I know it's a lot. I have this Tom Ford translucent finishing powder in Sahara Dusk that I thought could be kind of pretty as like a, like a not very pigmented contour. That's really, subtle and matte. Now I'm going to do this translucent peach whisper by Too Faced in some places. In other places I'm going to do this Becca Hydra Mist Shet and Refresh Powder and then Tarte Smooth Operator and you'll see why. It's because they each have a different color or lack thereof. All right so the Becca has more of like a natural color finish and so I'm going to do that Just press this in while we're doing the eyes. Keep everything nice. I have like a Beyonce style fan going over there in case you were wondering what all that noise was. Now, Kevin had like that bright white going on in the T-zone, which I love. It's like so supermodel. I'm going to do this right tart smooth operator the good thing about this as well is that it's the amazonian clay and so it also absorbs oil i get oily let's face it this is helpful especially in the zone that we want to be bright white and it's um translucent it doesn't stay white anyways but piling this under the eyes it will brush away but we do want it 
to be fairly heavy under the eyes for right now. Any fallout and hopefully won't ruin everything we've created so far. And also has kind of like a baking effect. I'm also going to mix a little bit of this um, peach perfect. It's cute and like brightening. So I'm just really packing the powder on under the eyes. Don't be afraid. It's powder city. You should be ready to rock and roll. We're ready to get our eyes on. All right, so here's the Marc Jacobs. These are such good liners. This is in Glitter Bug. Highliner Glam Glitter Gel Eye Crayon. So for this look, there's like a super intense cut crease, which I love so much. And so I'm gonna create that with a liner. Okay, I'm gonna start <laughs> with the cut crease. And it seems to kind of go like it starts more intense in here, so I'm gonna start, hopefully you can see me down here. Starts like down here, and then kind of like reshapes the eye, so I'm gonna kind of go with making the eye bigger and kind of create this really cool cut crease. So I start with like the line like that, and then I'm gonna take a couple little blending brushes. So this um, particular liner does dry out quickly, so you gotta you gotta work quickly. So I'm kind of trying to like create the illusion that my eyes are longer and larger than they are. And you can do this with any liner you have. You can use a black one as well. I just wanted to start a little lighter and kind of build up from there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. I'm going to add a little smolder to the cut crease because Smolder is so good. And this is Smolder by MAC. Smolder by MAC is like so it's this the staple. And it is super easy to blend. So it's really, really good to work with. And you know once you start to work with your eye look it usually does kind of start to take on a life of its own. So it is, for me, it's where the look starts to kind of come together. See, look how nicely that blends. All right, I need a clean brush now to kind of blend out the edges. So I'm going to use this NARS brush 16. It's a beautiful, beautiful brush. And I'm gonna just like blend out these edges a little so it's not like a harsh stopping line, but it also doesn't um, start coming out too far. And keep in mind, I haven't um, started with the eyeshadows, so this is just like my base coat to kind of build my shape off of. So I am feeling like this eye Maybe it can come up a little bit on the end. My eyes are not symmetrical, so this does happen. So even though this look is not complete, I want to make sure that the general shape that I start building off of with shadows is correctly proportioned. I look here and I go, okay, that one comes up here. This one looks like it should maybe come up right about there instead. And that looks right to me. So I'm going to take my powdered beauty blender and just set that. So it looks like the whole eye is lined as well, the upper lid. So I'm going to start with lining the waterline. So here's Rock and Roll Iconic Liquid Eye Pencil, Charlotte Tilbury. Rock and Coal, sorry. Okay, that's where I began, just the waterline. I hope you can see me when I do that. And now I'm seeing that the rest of the eye is lined. So we're gonna do that as well. I'm just gonna like lift the eye like this and get between the lashes with the pencil. And I'm just starting with like the outer so that I can like smudge it in and work with it. So I'll take, I'll start with like this guy. And this is Luxie Precise Crease. And I'll just like get in here and start just blending that pencil. I 
And if you need more pencil, like I do right now, I'll just draw some more on. But I like to start with less. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just dropping things everywhere. Kind of just draw that wing on a little bit, just smudge it out. Just kind of accentuate it over here. And she does have a little bottom just in the outer corners going. So I don't want to smudge it in further than there because I only want it to like wing out around here. So kind of like smudging it to meet up with here. But I want to keep it real nude in here, in this part of the lid. And then kind of bring the smudging down here. But don't bring it in further than right there. I love an eye that says cat eye without being literal. <laughs> Like without drawing a literal wing, it still translates cat eye. I think we just need a little more oomph. So I'm gonna actually do a little more of the liner on the bottom. When I look from far away, it needs a little extra. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of that. All right, so the outer rims of the eyes are also lined with like a pretty pale white. So is the brow. I think I'm gonna start um, setting it with a shadow and then kind of go from there. So I got some new shadow palettes that I really wanted to use. I just don't know if um, they'll suit the occasion. They're very shimmery, but I got these Pat McGrath ones. They're so pretty. This is the Eye Ecstasy Sublime eyeshadow palette. And then I also got the Mothership eyeshadow palette. It's a little one. It's not like the Mothership. But it's this one in Mothership Rose Decadence. So I'm going to see what I can figure out to use for this look. They are all mostly um, shimmery. So <laughs> shimmery and glittery. So we'll see. And this look is not shimmery or glittery at all. So I also have this ColourPop you had me at hello that I think is gonna work really well. Now I'm gonna take this brush, this neutral guy in ColourPop, and I'm gonna use that to just go underneath the eye. And then this one as well, and this guy just kind of Just kind of deepen the crease with those colors. And it will also set that liner, because right now it's all liner. Now we're gonna get this MAC brush, MAC 239, and I'm gonna get this color. And just get a little deeper in there. Since I already have like a shimmer thing going up here, I think we should just roll with that. Therefore, we're gonna have some fun colors here. I'm gonna go into this like darker brown here in the Pat McGrath and use that to kind of darken that lower lash line all the way across. I'm kind of like going on the lashes so it almost works as like a water liner and then I'm gonna do the same on the liner I use on the top and for that I could use the same brush or I could really get precise and use this so I'm gonna try that that same color that Pat McGrath color on the top and just like pat it into the lashes on the top like I'm using a liner now I believe if you use this wet you can actually get a super, wow that is pigmented though as it is, so I don't think you have to do that. See it looks like a liner. Okay, I'm going to use this one by NARS and use that same brown color to just get down and dirty on that crease. It kind of helps you pack the color on and blend at the same time. Wow, I really like these colors for um, eyeliner. 
All right, so it looks like to me, and it could be a shadow, but I'm kind of into it if it's not, that he did like a little old school Maryland thing here where they kind of like faked, a, faked the shadow of the lashes with a little bit of this. So that's how I'm interpreting it. <laughs> so I would like to play with some of these other colors. These colors are all really pretty. They're gonna give us shimmer, which is not really what we're going for. So maybe we start with this one and kind of like see what happens. And then maybe we can lay one of those over it. So I'm gonna just kind of go in. And I'm starting with the color on the outside so that it doesn't get super intense by the inside of the eye. Oof. Baby, baby. All right. Now, some of these colors here, I'm just like dying to try and add. <laughs> so maybe we do it and just see what happens. First, I'm gonna try this one that looks purple until I hold it up. But maybe I'll be a little gentle with her in case she turns on me. I swear it's purple. And then I hold it up to the light and it's not. So let's do like a little bit in here. Let's see what happens. Because I don't want it to take away from the darkness of this. I don't know, I'm really into this palette. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit of that under the eye. Just because. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think I should probably stop adding too many things to the eyes, but you know, these all have like a very bright whitey color um, right here. So I feel like to honor that, maybe choose one of these and I could do like a sparkle on the lid to see. So maybe we do that. So for like the sparkly lid, I could either go real glittery or do this pinky champagne i think the pinky champagne is probably the way to go so i'm gonna try that right here first okay subtle all right that's very pretty i'm into that i mean he does have like a highlight i just don't know if it's like a shiny highlight i'm gonna use his highlight on my brow while we're at it. Um, I think just one more thing for the lids. I would like one of these sparkle sparkles to pop in the middle. I mean, I know it's really not like the look, but I can't resist. <laughs> Maybe it's just this MAC brush. Let's hope I don't ruin it because of my obsession with sparkles. Okay. Next. She does have that white line. All right, so I'm just gonna like do a very simple lining of the lash line. So this is the Tarte Clay Paint something something or other. <laughs> I'm gonna just get in there. This is very easy to work with this product. Like easier than black track. That just glides right on in a good way. I see you, Tart. All right, I'm gonna line the bottom with this too. So I'm not darkening this little lash fake I did. I'm letting it be shadow. Just so there's like a lot of dimension happening in this look that I'm actually really pleased with. I was very nervous. And right now I'm very happy. Knock on wood that I don't do something stupid. Like have a slip of the hand. And then wanna cry. <laughs> uh, so I have to take this fluffy guy, brush off all that excess powder. We're gonna sculpt a little more. But first, lashes. I got my Chanel eyelash curler. Bring it to the base. Make sure all the lashes are in there. Pump, pump, pump while you tilt it. Ta-da! Now I always like to prime my lashes 
I just started using the L'Oreal Voluminous primer. It's a lot less expensive and actually works really well. And I prime each side, put on the mascara, and then go to the next. And I'm going to use this Tarte Man Eater mascara today because I like this precise little brush guy. I'm gonna make sure I look up really good so I don't get mascara on my lid and ruin my lid. All right, that worked okay. Not my fave, but it's good for the bottom lashes. My inspiration is looking, I'm getting pleased with how close I am so far. You know, I'm gonna do something weird. I'm gonna use Bad Gal Bang on this eye. We'll just see what the difference is. See which one looks better. I mean, they both look pretty good, but pretty over the top in a very good way. That's making me very satisfied. I'm gonna do the lips next because um, it will help me to see where I am in terms of what else do I need. I'm gonna start with this uh, posy tint. Get a little more space going. So the shape of the lips that he did for her are different than my lip shape. So I'm going to change my lip shape in yes. order to get this look, which I love. I love playing with the shapes of the face and stuff. It's so bad. Kevin did lips how I did lips, or rather I do lips how Kevin did lips. So I'm gonna start with some nude liners. All right, I'm gonna try Rum Raisin by Bobbi Brown. I think this one will be good. So it like, comes up from the side here. A little urge on. Like that. And then here, it's more like that. Now I'll carve this out with concealer on the edges and use lighter colors to like contour and filling in the whole lip with a pencil is what I always do and it just helps make the lips stay and then if it wears off it doesn't just wear off to like a weird one spot lipstick you have like a whole lip of lip underneath all right we have one more bobby brown that's in pale pink in the middle and as you see I like sculpt it from every angle and then you can take a little concealer brush boop, boop, -doo, that has just a scotch of concealer on it and just like line them up get those edges really nice Especially right here, where you cheated the lip. And you could just use the excess, or just touch up anywhere. As you see, all that powder I used made it so that there's no sloppies under the eyes, which is really nice. Then you can take this and go into your little powder foundation. And make sure it's set. Now, <laughs> you're probably thinking there's more. We need lipstick. Have our Chanel lip brush and our entire Bobbi Brown, Bobbi Brown palette. And since these looks were very like nude, I'm gonna start with a color like this. This is Bikini Pink. I usually mix a ton. I'm gonna start with Bikini Pink and Tiger Lily. It has a little like sparkle to it. 
I don't want pink. We want like nude. Almost like a frosty. We can layer the. It's still a little too pink. I also have a MAC single lipstick that might just get me there faster. Here you are. Creme de nude. Let's just apply this directly on. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So creme de nude. And I actually want the liner to be more brown, like hodgepodge by MAC. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. I also would like a little body glass, please. I have this pure iconic. I mix a little bit of that and a little bit of this African Botanics Shimmering Gold Oil. It's a concoction. And a little bit of this Herbivore Rose Quartz that smells delightful. This is the MAC Golden Bronze and Silver Dusk. I opened both of them because I like it extra. That's the Golden Bronze. This is the Silver Dusk. Take a brush like this. Get it in both caps and just buff it on. If you want to get a little shimmery, you could just use a little bit of the extra. We're going to contour for reals now. Doesn't need too much. So we have this Smashbox step-by-step -step contour palette. I'm going to go in with this guy into contour one and just kind of follow where her face is contoured. Contoured here. It's heavily contoured here, but it still looks beautiful and natural here. It's contoured, but it's not shimmery. So I want to make sure I stay true to that that 90s vibe, you know. I want to use a fluffy brush like this to use the same thing to do my nose to try to still get my nose looking as much like hers as I can. Now I'm going to go into this one. Just like blend it into the hairline. Okay, this is Endless Summer Bronzer from my Mud Makeup School. It has zero shimmer. All right, I don't want to contour too much. The blush that she does have in this look is very light, kind of looks like light pink. So I'll try to replicate that the best I can. And I feel like Liberty could work, Liberty, whatever. And Gilda would work well. So I'm gonna do a little, little blend here. And I'm gonna make sure my application is very light because like I said, it's not very blushy and the blush is literally only here because it's very like fashion. <laughs> so let's see. But I do think that Gilda could be perfect. It's like my go-to blush anyhow. Again, I don't want it to be too blushy. I may already have taken it a little too blushy. I love blush, so I tend to take things too blushy all the time. I am going to use this rose water setting spray. Make everything join together in holy matrimony. And I am going to do one more thing. This Chanel, it's so beautiful, Moonlight. Wait till you see this. It has this little pretty powder puff. And you just gotta go like this. The 
only last thing I would do maybe is just for a little extra brightening under the eye area because their under eyes are just so bright and so beautiful. I think I would just do a, one last little touch through the T-zone. So that has been my recreation to the best of my ability. My interpretation and recreation of 90s Versace runway glam that I've been obsessed with since I was a kid. And I hope you liked it and I hope I did a good job. Yeah, I hope it inspires you to recreate things and let me know what you'd like to see next like my video please <laughs> and subscribe to my channel and comment what you'd like to see me recreate next and take on next <laughs> i hope you liked it i love you